Welcome to Railroad. My name is Nina Naus and I will be your guide on this showcase of Railroad. And what is this game? Well, it is a tycoon and management game inspired by Railroad Dispatching. So it is a different take on our beloved genre of train management game. Instead of building the macro level trains here in this game, we are zooming in and managing switches, tracks, and also laying the tracks, but there is a lot more technicality and it is from the perspective of a train dispatcher. This video is focused on giving you the best possible idea of what kind of game this is and how it plays so you get an educated opinion on whether this is something for you and if it's something you want to buy or something you want to see more of here on the channel. Thank you very much to Bitrich Studios for sponsoring this video. In this video I'll be playing the tutorial map but I have uh, removed the in-game voiceover as I am your tutorial for today. If you like this kind of video, this kind of showcase, if you like the game, be sure to hit the like button, share it, uh, share the video, and of course, consider subscribing if you want to watch more management simulation games here on the channel. Let's dive in. So this is our UI. It is very stripped down, but it has exactly what we need to, to do. We are going straight into it. You can see I'm flipping a switch, and then as I click the signal, these uh, hmm, half circle things, then uh, the train starts moving. You can see the train here on the, on the line, and uh, it has a train schedule, so we can see the clock, lower left-hand corner, and you can see what time it departs. And it will then depart uh, when there is a green signal, and the green signal indicates that now the path is, is ready. We can see behind the train, we switch the, the switch, switch the switch, yeah, we change the switch so that it can go back. So now it arrives at the first station. You can see that we have several uh, stations here. It is a, a train that goes back and forth from uh, Device to... Butni and then back to Device and it uh, starts at platform 2 and then goes back to Butni and then goes back to platform 1 again. Here we can uh, see the overlay so we can see kind of an idea about the overall schedule for each of the train stations. These train stations, uh, Device, Butni and uh, Docks, those are the ones we have and the first mission is to dispatch three trains in here in the network. So as it completes, we get some money and we get a little green science, a little green train up top. And those are need for unlocking new research. So here we have the next train. We can now see where it go. We allocate it to a track. We set the switches. This uh, switch is going to the docks. Well, that's not going to work, is it? So uh, we are going to have to uh, to build a new line. So you can see there's also the map part about, it's not just controlling switches and signals, but you also have to build meaningful new lines. And uh, now we have a more direct path from Device to the docks. And we can now first set the switches and then we set the signal and then it has a green path all the way through and we can then speed up the time so it passes through. And that is at the very core, it's about making sure that the trains the schedules of the trains is fulfilled and then how we uh, we manage the train network both in terms of designing it but also managing it while it, after it's designed and as uh, the game progresses there will be more and more automation and more and more complexity we're starting for, of course from the very very basic part here and now we have sort of a bit of idle idle time before the name, next train arrives just to make sure but as you can see over the lower left hand corner we can see for the schedule for david and uh, we have a train coming in and we have to allocate it manually right now, but we will need to. We will be able to allocate it automatically a bit later on, as uh, as we progress. Uh, this train is uh, just holding there, waiting until departure time. It departs, and now it is on the tracks. I'm again flipping the switch right behind it, so that uh, it goes back to Device One station uh, platform instead of. Uh, it's coming. It's departing from platform two, and it's uh, arriving at platform one. It's just how it goes. We need to uh, manually rever uh, reverse the train so that you can see there's a little light in front of the train. And when it gets into the station, we have to flip it so it, it reverses. And that is three of the trains and we should have one more train coming in. Let's see, we got 4,000 money and one train icon. So that's what we need for upgrades as we move forward. Now we know that the next train will be coming in for the docks. So it is already uh, ready to go, coming in and we just speed up and then we can pass the train all the way towards the docks. So it gives us just a very basic idea about, okay, you're, there are some switches, there are some signals, there are trains, what does it look like? They uh, need to be managed through the network. You can see the dots after the docks uh, station. That means it's, it's, uh, it just sort of passes out of the network. Now we have the upgrades, we have uh, unlocked uh, enough things. So over here on automation, there is an auto accept train option. So basically 
you can also see there's many more different things here and all of those are available for upgrade and they both makes it more complex, makes it bigger, but also simplifies some things so that once you've been uh, used to making doing something manually, then you realize that you can't scale up the game beyond that if you don't get something automated. And that's what these things help with. And so that's where we're going to go. We are going to go back to the automation. We are going to be do the auto accept trains. This is what the tutorial wants us to do. So let's do that. Uh, the way it works is that now we have unlocked, we've used five of our green points that we get one for every train that arrives on time. We have a little button add added to the UI for each station where it accepts, it accepts the trains. So that we will now see that each train will now, when it arrives, instead of being stuck outside and having to be manually allocated to the platform, it'll jump straight into the platform if there's room for it. And only if there's no room, will it be, be waiting outside for us to maybe reallocate it or maybe just accept the delay and wait for, uh, for the platform to be empty. So a big part of the game is both in terms of designing the network, but also understanding when to accept new contracts. You can see there's a little bling here. This is a, a new contract that we can then get and we can see how much money we can make from it. It goes from some stations that we don't have at all. And so those uh, don't really make sense because we don't have them. We could expand out there, but we don't have the money for it. So it gives a lot of money, but also has a requirement for a very high speed. So this is uh, all about sort of figuring out the contracts that you can make money on and where this, it fits into your network, both in terms of when you have capabilities available and where you, uh, where you have space for it in your schedule. Not just space physically, but space in mainly in a time perspective. We have this train and we will just allocate it up towards this. And you can see we have to allocate the switches manually, but that's again something that later on will be automated for us as well. So there's tons of, uh, of steps forward here. Now at this point, we can see that we are, we are having two trains that want to come in at the same time and we're going to have to accept a somewhat of a delay. This is why it's not just happening automatically and we need to figure out what's going to happen. So now this is reversing, but it can't reverse because there's already another train on that line. So we're going to have to wait and you can see they will now only go a tiny bit in, but now it can go all the way through and you can see the red line. That's what it refers, reserves on the, on the line. And as this train comes home, we should be seeing an upgrade opportunity. We now look at different contracts to see which ones would be valuable for us to get. And uh, that is probably a good time for us to, uh, to maybe look, take a look at a new station. Uh, we saw a line that's uh, all the way over to here. And uh, then we can buy this station. We'll buy one of the stations and we'll have this auto block. Auto block is something that has to be unlocked. An auto block is basically representing a long line of tracks that is uh, nothing happens on this tracks, but it sort of goes in there and disappears. It's a way to illustrate a bigger area without having representative sizes, but basically it goes into the block. And if there's one indicator on the block, that means there's room for one train. Here you can see there are two little blocks. That means that can fit two trains in there. And then we need to go up to that next outer block, and then we can get it back into Putney. And then we have a dedicated line all the way through. So we're going to be spending all of the money we have so far on building a train line all the way in. Yeah, well, not there. We'll kindly just uh, remove it. So we built the line here and it connects between the outer blocks and it connects to the next one. Wouldn't have been nice if I had placed them so that I could make a straight line. Well, that would be nice. That's unfortunately all we have uh, can afford. So let's uh, make some more money before we can uh, can get that. We still have a lot of other trains that we need to schedule. So let's make sure that our trains are running so we can make some uh, make some more money. There we go. That's another 4,000 to, uh, to help build additional tracks. But uh, we will need to just get a few more trains in order to get us all the way to the end. There, now we have the trains, uh, the tracks all the way. We have all of the stations connected. Then we can go back to our contract. And the one we locked was here from Visukani to Vedevice. Yes, I'm not sure, not sure my uh, my pronunciation is correct, but we assign it. And then this is actually a trial train. So what this means is that this is the baseline. We will execute it on our tracks. And then based on the performance, we will get probably less because we're not driving as fast as it wants us to, wants us to go. 
And then as a result, we will accept or decline the contract and then it'll be a recurring contract on a, a hourly basis. You can see here it's now stuck inside the outer, uh, outer block and it moves gradually through the network all the way over. So it's a very long line. It's also a very profitable one, even if we're not going to get the full value of it. And then we have the train coming home. Uh, but uh, the game also wants uh, to teach us something new. And that something new is about auto signals. So that is, uh, let's jump on into the auto signals. This is a, another level of automation, automatic routing here, which gives us auto signals. So let's get that. What auto signals work? It's not quite the same as a, as a change signal, but what it does is it automatically changes the switches after the signal. So instead of us flipping the switches and then setting the signal, in this case, we can actually set the signal and then by setting the signal, we select the station it's going to, and then it'll be automatically. Let's uh, have a look at what that was going to be, what that's going to be working like. First, we need to get our trial train home. That was the trial train. Uh, we only get 55,000 out of the 16 potential because we're driving way slower, but I still am very happy with the 5,000. Uh, that's still a good, good amount of money for us and because our tracks are just too slow. Again, something that can be upgraded. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to get a bit of money because those auto signals are super expensive. They cost 10,000, but they're worth it. And here, this is the, the usual part. We will set the, the switch and then we will uh, we'll uh, we'll set the signal afterwards. But if I do it the other way around, for example, I have here, then uh, if I flip the switch, now I click the auto signal and then I indicate the station and then it will automatically set the chain, the, the signal, or set the switches along the way. So already now we can see that a, a little bit more automation instead of just flipping switches everywhere, as long as we have the auto signals, then they will automatically be going where we want. There, and uh, that means now the train can go out there. So ideally we don't want to have auto signals everywhere, also because you can chain auto signals together later on, so you can uh, indicate more and more, but that's, uh, that is for later, but at least this one is saving us a lot of, uh, of hassle here. And the next one is, uh, well, we were kind of slow, uh, so that will need to go. You can see here, we can now set it automatically up to the docks and then we'll automatically flip the switches as we go. So we'd really like to get more of these switches, uh, auto signals, not switches, auto signals wherever we, uh, wherever we can. Still, we have to reverse as manually, but you know, that's also something that can be uh, researched later on. On the return plot, we don't have uh, have that yet. So now we can also look at new contracts. So it's about, since we have this uh, Visukani location and we have Botany, then that might actually be a location we could get. If we want to get it, we would want to buy another platform here at, at Botany so we can we don't uh, conflict with the other, uh, other stations. So with new platform, and that is now good. Then we will do the trial train for this one. We'll accept this contract, looks very profitable. It'll start from Mr. County and then it will go all the way. Flip the switch and the signal because it's not an auto signal and we don't have the money to make it an auto signal. So we now have uh, this trial train. This will need to go all the way through and then get back again. Uh, and then it'll be basically our way of uh, another train added to the network. Here. Those auto signals are just making things so much easier and we really want auto signals everywhere, if at all possible. Now we have a few more signals. We can afford one more signal. That's, uh, we put them in wherever we feel that they are most valuable. And now we have our trial train is, is running here. Now I need to reverse it. And then it just needs to go back to the original station. But at this point, yeah, it just there's just one station. We don't have the possibility to change uh, change the platforms yet, but we will so that we can we can start shifting them from one platform to the next because right now they are forced to go on the platform that we worked on. So what I'm doing here is I made a little parallel line because we have a lot of, cha of trains going back and forth between uh, uh, Devecia and Putney and we want to make sure that they are they don't interfere with the ones that go from Devecia to Docks and uh, later on maybe Devecia to some other locations. So we now want to uh, route the, the trains down here. Uh, it's still going to need a few more uh, iterations here because we can't change what platforms they're on, not just yet. That's something we need to research and then we will be getting it. So here the train is going in, still needs to be reversed. 
And then it comes back. This is a intercity train that's very valuable. So we can actually also get that. It's a long intercity train and goes just on that uh, track out here. We assign it all the way through. And there, that has its own pretty much dedicated track. So that's uh, really nice. This one is kind of in the way. It can't go through here, but now it can. And delay for two minutes. Psh, that happens. That happens. Ooh, we could get more of these. And that's the one that that's actually opposite of uh, the one we just issued. Don't want to take that because then they'll be bumping into each other halfway through. So we'll keep them one way, one direction here. At this point, we now have a bit of a, a conflict. And if we assign that up here, then we're blocking the other train. So let's get this the docks train through. The docks train is actually the one I want to move up to the top one that we haven't done yet. Uh, I'll be setting a little signal in here. It, it helps a bit because now you can sort of indicate it that it just goes to the next signal. It's okay, but it's not really the most efficient manner. What we'd really like to do is make sure that we get the docks train on a separate uh, network. But for that, we need to be able to change the platform that the trains are assigned to. And that will be probably the next thing we want to do. So here we have our another train here. This is uh, the one that we did earlier as the trial train. Now it's just becoming a normal train. Uh, we just need the other, uh, the intercity train to pass through. And as you can see, all of the normal trains that we have, we always have to maintain it. So at this point, it becomes very much a uh, a whack-a-mole game that you have to you have to be able to manage all your trains. And then when you sort of have the overview for it, you can uh, you can see that okay, we actually have capacity and the lo location here. That was our intercity trial train. We got us another five thousand from that. That's pretty good. What we're now doing is uh, ascending trains. Uh, that's now a yet another intercity train that goes the other way. We, we have the line, so why not to uh, why not allocate it? Although it is kind of busy, it's getting kind of congested here around Botany, but we'll uh, we'll be sending it out. Um, but we now have the the next part. Now we can adjust the timetable. We have that unlocked. That's a research that unlocked. You can see we only have one green uh, train up the top uh, because we've already used it. So what we need to do is this one just goes to the docks. But we want to make sure that the next time this one comes in, if we go to adjust timetable, then David should two, the little icon two afterwards is actually should be changed to three. Like that. That's the top one. For some reason, it's one, two, four, three, or three, one, two, four. I don't know why that is, but that doesn't matter. It is the way it is. Uh, here, if we click the number, then we can add the lower part of the screen. We can see the actual schedule and you can see this one goes to David Chit 2 or actually starts at David Chit 2. And since we have auto trains, then they will automatically be placed here. So we need to change it before the next train comes in. And there we go. We've now uh, in this contract view, we've now changed the, the timetable. So that they will now be coming in. The ones for the docks will be coming in at uh, platform three, the top one. And we can now bulldoze that little link. Yes, bulldoze the link. Should be possible, should be safe, right? I mean, let's let's be courageous and bulldoze that link and also take the signal. This signal now has no value anymore because we will get it. So now what we have is the lines are now completely separate. What we can also do is what I think is a good idea. We buy another station and then we have a station for the inbounds and a station for the outbounds. Oh, it needs to be unselected, not allocated at this point. So basically what this means is since it's a trial train that doesn't care which one it's, it's going to, then we will send it into number one. But we do have another train and that's the one that was going back and forth with, with the Putney. And then this will is now assigned to number three and we will now change it back to number one. So the now trains will arrive or will start from platform three, but they will depart at platform one. That means we can have a train that is going out and another one that's coming in at the same time. Now it's time for doing a upgrade on the Northern line. The reason why we want to do an upgrade here on the Northern line is because there is a special kind of, of uh, contract. You can see up top, we have six uh, of the green, uh, green icons and uh, we don't have any of the red ones. The red ones are special one time uh, contracts and we have a special one-time contract for this particular line. So this is a good time to build this line 
we are going to be building a line all the way over that also opens up a few more stations that we are going to use later on and there so now we have a bit more congestion over here by the Visukani, and now we go up to Holovice, Hol Holovice and to what was the last one part something all right so we are trying to figure out that we don't want our trains to depart at the same time from all the locations this one is a special train you can see that next to the number 867 it had a little uh, red arrow because it, it's not a repeating one so at this point we can now schedule this ah this is the normal train we have not scheduled the other one yet we've not uh, taken it in because we need to make sure that we get this line out and as this departs then we can take our train you can see this little icon here and it's a, a freight and it gives us one red one if we manage to get it for the one one-time contract and we will allocate it and it'll be going through the network up here on this dedicated line that we now have and once that's done we will get a little red ink icon uh, that we can use for uh, for upgrades special upgrades more advanced upgrades need the red ones and there we go that was the money for the one-time contract and the uh, one icon so what we need to do now is well find the most valuable thing we can research given our uh, given our build here yeah okay so what we want to do is take that out we want to just upgrade a few things here get that for auto signal we have the money so some of these more convenient ones here that uh, let's set some auto signals at those locations and then we can use the auto signal here to select the next location and here again we can also select where it's going and it just makes it ever so slightly easier now that one will pass all the way through and as we get here we get a new quest you could say a mission that says get 10 of these uh, these points the green points and one of the red points and once we have that we can then unlock basic tracks which is an upgrade currently all tracks can only uh, we can only drive 40 kilometers per hour on these tracks but uh, if we upgrade them we can actually get it to to up to 80. it's really expensive but it's uh it's well worth it because we are not getting uh, the full many of our contracts because we can't reach this high enough speed uh, this one it doesn't give us a lot of money, uh, but it uh, it does have a, a line that we could take. Let's try it. We don't have any anything on this line, so why not send it up here? And these like this. And we can't really get it any further, but so we need to manage the difference here. And there we go. We got the 10 points. So now it's time for us to get an upgrade. And it's really insistent about the upgrade and it wants us really to get the basic tracks upgrade we do that upgrade and now we can uh, we have to upgrade uh, some of the tracks so as you can see there are tons of upgrades in this uh, view that we can then do and this will then change it the blue one indicates they are 40 kilometers and it changes to purple when they go uh one higher it's pretty damn expensive so we need to make a lot of money and we need to make good decisions as where we want to uh, want to get it. that one was uh, just insufficient money for that uh, so we'll just uh, wait a bit on uh, getting that upgraded. And now we have it uh, upgraded. We can now look for other things that we want to get. For example, we have uh, one. We have the auto reverse trains. Super nice because uh, right now we're still every single train that goes back and forth from uh, Device to Budni will have to reverse it. But now it will uh, reverse by itself. So you can see that as we progress with this base, some of the things that we started out with, such as uh, the signals, the switches, uh, now the reversing, those will just gradually be be automated. The, later on, we'll get a research called perpetual routes. That means that I don't have to set the signals back and forth. They will just simply, they'll simply, when they arrive, they will try to go there. So for example, some of those that are really simple and never in conflict, they will just execute by themselves. You can also queue things up so that after after you do something, then it will flip the switch, flip the signal afterwards. So very much this is the early game and this is where we just get a sense of it. And as you can, as I noticed at this point, is that I don't have enough clicks available to manage all the things that are important for me to do and therefore I couldn't be able to scale up unless I had some automation. So you'll need to find good contracts, make good money, upgrade your tracks, upgrade your signals 
um, get more of the points, do some of the upgrades. So particularly the red upgrades are super important. And those red upgrades, they, uh, they're the ones that, um, that actually get us, get us some of the big, more important, uh, more important upgrades. And as you do that, you can get more money and uh, sort of scale up the classic, uh, you could say Factorio style, where more more resources gives us more uh, int more production and that more production gets us a bigger network that gets us more production and so on and so forth. Of course, we just need to make sure that that is unreserved before we can uh, make a track collide with the other one. And then we go out of that menu and then we can flip it and then we'll have it. So this will be going just between these two stations and then back again and again, I have to have a arrival and a destination station uh, platform here. So that is basically what I, uh, what I wanted to show you um, here. There is one, um, as you can see, we are just manually adding this in and there's quite a lot of things in the train, in the network. I'm trying to keep things as separate as possible so that they can be automated later on uh, and then trying to find that rhythm. So that is, I would say, the core of the gameplay of this this game is to build your network, get the right contracts, make money, and uh, make uh, science upgraded so you can op automate it more. As you automate more, you can then have the sort of mental capacity to expand your your train network. Now it does seem like a really um, relaxing game, but I must say that it can be really stressful at times. So I would highly recommend is keeping a finger on the pause button. As you can see, all the, every time something happens, I just hit the pause so that I can respond in time and give it the commands I need it, set the signals, that kind of thing. And then I'll, uh, I'll let it run at 15 X speed afterwards. Uh, so you can see I'm fl flipping back and forth between pause and uh, not pause. So I'd highly recommend that as, as you learn the game. So, uh, if you have enjoyed this game, well, I, I, I hope that you have. I hope that I've given a fair representation, representation of what this uh, this game is about. I've had a good time streaming it and uh, and playing it here. And depending, on, of course, on your feedback, then uh, we can play more of it either on stream or here on YouTube. So uh, let me know what you think uh, in the comment section below. And of course, if you like this video, be sure to hit the like button as usual. And if you want to see more, showcases of new and games within the genre that we are playing, the management, simulation games, all of that stuff, then uh, consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you very much for watching and thank you very much to Bitrich Studios for sponsoring this video. Until next time, take care and oh no, stay effective.